Good evening everyone, this is Manas, your friend and tutor and in today's session we are going to take a look at the Coriolis component of acceleration. How does this come into existence? But before that, you first need to understand the Coriolis effect and this is something which is a part of our mother nature. Let me take up a few examples and, and you are going to be my partner in crime today and let's, let's with the help of these examples, let's try to understand the Coriolis effect in a much better fashion. Okay. <clears throat> let's say let's say that there is a circular platform right you're watching this from the top let's say that there is a circular platform and you are sitting here i'm sitting here i'm having a tennis ball in my hand right and this 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 is a sort of rotating platform rotating platform let's say this is rotating in the anti-clockwise sense so we have a friend over here who is pulling it tangentially we have a friend over here who is again pulling it tangentially so this sets this rotating table into motion right i'm sure you must have seen a merry-go-round also in amusement parks anyway even if you have not don't worry let's say let's assume let's think of a rotating table on which i am sitting here and you you are sitting diametrically opposite this way and i am having a tennis ball in my hand and I throw that ball right now this table is not rotating right now this table is not rotating if I throw a ball at you absolutely straight you're going to catch it Done. bang no problem no issues what if there is going to be some issue let me let me state that circumstance if this table on which both of us are seated happens to be rotating let's say in the anti-clockwise sense and now if I throw a ball absolutely straight I've thrown it absolutely straight I know that. Yes, I have. If you try to catch it, you'll never be able to catch it. It would appear to you as well as me that the ball is sort of curving away. This apparent curving away, this apparent deflection of the ball is what is known as the Coriolis effect. Just think about it. Both of us are rotating. Right? Think about it. Think about it. Just try to frame frame a sort of animation in your brain. Both of us are rotating. You are sitting in front of me and vice versa. And I throw a tennis ball exactly straight. I know that I've thrown it straight. But since the platform on which you and I are sitting, since that platform, the frame of reference is rotating. And we happen to be a part of that frame of reference. Even if I throw it straight, it would appear to us. Right? Our perception, it would appear to us that it is curving. So this apparent curving, this apparent deflection is because of the Coriolis effect. <laughs> Sounds strange, but that's true. Okay, <clears throat> another example. Next example. So if you're a big fan of video games, PC, PlayStation, Xbox, wherever you play, Sniper, snipers, let's say. These shooters shoot for a long range. Let's say two to three miles. Or in kilometers, let's say three to five kilometers. Let's take the example of a sniper. Okay, so let's say you are learning the, the art of shooting in a sniper's academy. <clears throat> so it's your first day of training and you know nothing about the Coriolis component of acceleration you're not a student of physics if you had been a student of physics you would have learned about it but no you are not a student of physics and this is something that they'll teach you practically so you aim your target right and that target is like like something like this let's say this is the ground and that's the target this is where you need to hit Right. somewhere along the board let's say circular board and you have your gun placed right here like this okay and you fire you happen to fire a bullet so that's the bullet yeah pardon my drawing <coughs> so you aimed at the target you shot the bullet has left the gun barrel of the gun let's say okay going in this direction towards the target now both of you you are sitting here okay you are sitting here and that's your target now 
both of you happen to be a part of the earth isn't it and the earth rotates about its own axis isn't it so the time in which the bullet will leave this and reach here in that very short duration of time which is going to be very short in that very short duration of time the target would have moved in this direction moved in this fashion isn't it and so are you and so will you so it would appear to you it would appear to you that you you initially aimed it very straight and obviously the bullet is going to move in the straight direction absolutely straight but it would appear to you that the bullet has deflected or the bullet has slightly curved or changed its path why is the change it is because of the coriolis effect right <clears throat> and that is exactly what is going to be today's agenda so let's begin by first of all just brushing up our concepts that we've learned in the previous four sessions now in the previous four sessions we spoke about a link let me tell that in a very rough sense so you've got this link okay the link is fixed lovely let's say this is point r let's say this is point a point r happens let let me put this point r over here okay and let, let's say the point r is here and this is point q and q happens to be at some distance let's say r there is going to be some centripetal acceleration there is going to be some tangential acceleration whose value is alpha r if this is alpha and if this is omega and fc will be equal to omega square r isn't it this is what we already know radially inwards always towards the center that is the centripetal acceleration this is in the direction of alpha thick that's alpha that's the tangential acceleration and this is what we know already what we really need to work out is these two cases and this will lay the foundation for the investigation of the coriolis component of acceleration how does this up come into the picture so you need to investigate right you are the fbi you are the cbi let's say and you want to find who is producing the acceleration right you know it is coriolis but you need to search for it how will you do that let's talk about it <clears throat> first article has been discussed what we already know now let's see what we want to know so watch this is going to be very interesting let's say um, let's say we've got a link yeah let's say this point is point r let's say this is point a and link is fixed okay so it can obviously rotate like this like this with some obviously angular velocity and let's say it also has some angular acceleration so every second there is going to be an increase in the angular velocity why the simple reason being angular acceleration just like linear acceleration it it gives some increase in velocities linear velocity similar to that notion we have got angular acceleration because of which there is going to be some increase in the angular velocity okay that's point a <coughs> slider is locked what is this slider that i'm talking about so it's something like this that's the slider which is sliding along the link right so at this moment in time it is locked what will happen if it starts sidling something weird is going to happen some weird kind of an acceleration will come into the picture which is popularly known as the coriolis component of acceleration we'll get to that point don't worry okay so slider locked this is the case when the slider is locked let's say we've got a point over here this point happens to be on the slider if it is on the slider it's point p and if it that point is on the link right now both of them are coinciding q point is on the link what is the name of that link it is the link a r if you want to see this in 3d it's something like this let's say this is our slider let me try to make this pop properly this is the slider uh, this is the slot yeah that's a that's r and this is the slider it can slide in the radially outward direction or in the radially inward direction okay so we've got a point on this slider and we've got a point right below on this on this link that is point q so if you watch it from the top both p and q are coinciding right now slider is locked so p and q will coincide in the second case let's take a look at this this is going to be very interesting this is going to be your point r that's the link like this slider 
is now being released what will happen if the slider is released let's say it has moved by some distance moved by some distance so that's your point p and absolutely straight here we have got our point q so q still is on the slider and uh, not on the slider but q is still on the link a r and p is on slider isn't it we wish to work out what is the absolute acceleration now we wish to work out what is the acceleration acceleration of p with respect to a how can this be worked out this is going to be our objective now <clears throat> as far as our knowledge is concerned we can say that we know of only two components that is the tangential component and also the radial component or the centripetal component as we know that this slider is moving radially outwards here it is locked but here it is moving isn't it here it is moving let's say with acceleration f it at an instant it has some velocity v. so obviously this is the acceleration chart that we are making acceleration is in the upward direction we've assumed that this slider is moving radially upwards or outwards with some acceleration of f so f is going to be in this direction where does this coriolis component of acceleration come into the picture let me tell you very frankly here there are two accelerations one is tangential acceleration which happens to be alpha r there is going to be one more acceleration which is known as the coriolis component of acceleration whose magnitude is 2 omega v where omega is nothing but the angular velocity with which this link is rotating and v is the linear velocity at any instant v is the linear velocity okay so that is the setup for you and this how this comes into the picture is a matter of our investigation and this is going to be our objective we need to find this f corollis one more thing one more thing which is worth watching is the application of vectors now we've set up the objective for us this is what we need to work out and we are going to analyze the link both parallel to the link we'll try to find the acceleration when perpendicular to the link again we'll we'll try to find the acceleration if you watch f absolute acceleration i'm talking about p with respect to q p relative to q a is nothing but the acceleration of p with respect to a fixed point let us say a p relative a minus the acceleration of q again with respect to a fixed point as far as this qa is concerned we know that there are going to be two components one is q with respect to a centripetal one is going to be q with respect to a tangential and now if you if you want to fine tune it let's say we want the acceleration of p with respect to a and this is nothing but the absolute acceleration okay so it can be written as f p q f q a so we know everything about f q a that's it we want to know everything about pq if you watch there is some sliding happening along the length of the link with some acceleration f so if you want to break this into components so one is going to be f the linear acceleration of the slider the second component obviously is going to be the coriolis component of acceleration right and this is something which is a matter of investigation we'll see that very soon this happens to be our slider let me mark a point there are actually two points over here one of which is a point p point p on the slider and there is another point point q which is on the link as i've shown to you in the 3d figure link what link ar right this has to be told p comma q both of them right here slider is having some linear acceleration of f because of which there is going to be some instantaneous velocity v and this happens to be rotating like this angular velocity is omega some angular acceleration also so second by second there is going to be an increase in the value of angular velocity let me rub this first of all let's say this is our stage one and in stage one we are having three parameters in the form of omega at an instant alpha and also r so if you watch right now point p and q since both of them are coinciding they are going to have the same radius of rotation that is r okay fine stage two let us start off with stage two and let me make it look more dramatic okay so in between what has happened some some 
some time has passed in time delta t link a r has rotated has rotated by some amount let's say del theta watch yeah that is the initial position isn't it and this is the fixed link that's the fixed you need to have some patience better to watch this video at a higher speed i would recommend you to watch this at 1.25x speed okay then you can save a lot of time and now these concepts take time okay so that's um, uh, this is this is rather this was the location of point q as well as p so p since it is sliding it would have uh, traveled some distance in the outward direction if you watch now let's say that the link has reached this position and this becomes your r dash for you and this happens to be point q so point q will be at the same distance of r initially now let's say that the slider is right here and then let me make it like this small okay that's that is your point p the radial outward movement that the slider has undergone let's say is delta r and let's call this in totality as r dash lovely okay stage 1 and that's stage 2 and now the parameters are omega dash obviously because of angular acceleration in this position the angular velocity would increase it would become omega dash and since there is some linear acceleration okay since there is some linear acceleration the velocity obviously the velocity component will now be in somewhere in this direction this is going to be your v dash right so v from v it has become v dash because of this linear acceleration f and from omega it has become omega dash because of this angular acceleration both of them can be calculated if you watch carefully v dash v equals u plus at initial velocity is v plus a means acceleration f is the linear acceleration of slider along the link that is radially outwards and that's delta t as far as omega is concerned omega dash is final omega is initial acceleration that is alpha times delta t r dash becomes r plus del r r plus del r so we have got everything worked out r plus del r what we need to work out is the absolute acceleration of of this slider with respect to this fixed point and that happens to be point a okay let us try to work it out all right so <clears throat> let me let me let me put it this way absolute acceleration of p absolute acceleration of p by that i mean to say f p with respect to a okay and i already told you in the vector form that f p with respect to a is nothing but f p with respect to q plus f q with respect to a you know everything about this but you know only a little bit about this f p with respect to q is going to have one of its components as small f small f let's say the linear acceleration of slider but the other component is a mystery which we will try to work out which will work out as 2 omega v which is known as coriolis acceleration component let's see how that works out okay omega dash r dash and and v dash also so here let me write input one more parameter that is v so instead of writing this alpha it's better that we write v okay omega becomes omega dash that's the relation v becomes v dash that's the relation r becomes r dash and that is the relation okay so this is our objective Accel absolute acceleration of p so there are two ways in which it can be analyzed number one number one acceleration of p parallel to ar this is one way to analyze it and we are going to write the final result over here so let us do the analysis yo watch so by definition acceleration is change in velocity 
by the time interval in that or in which that change in velocity has taken place okay so the time interval is extremely small and that is that is the idea behind calculating the instantaneous accelerations so what we will be applying this formula this is going to be equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity and the time interval we know that is delta t and we need to do something delta t always tends to zero it will never become zero this is the concept of limits that we are going to apply right and this is something which we do to find the instantaneous accelerations okay whenever you do average acceleration you won't follow this whenever you want to find the instantaneous accelerations always remember delta t tends to zero anyway you learn all of that in due course what is the final velocity and for that some kind of uh, mathematics will come into the picture just a second v dash that's the vertical that's the horizontal and this angle happens to be del theta you see it has turned by a certain angle the del theta so this is going to be the component v dash cos del theta and we have another component over here like this v dash sin del theta okay this way and one more thing perpendicular to the link you can see this component is omega how far is it this is at a distance of r so it's going to be omega r so and this way this is going to be let me write it properly omega dash r dash again this can also be split up into components if you watch here the angle is going to be del theta here also the angle is going to be del theta so omega dash r dash if you watch omega dash r dash if i can make it somewhere here this omega dash r dash is going to have two components one horizontal one vertical this omega dash r dash here we have del theta so this is going to be omega dash r dash cos del theta and this is going to be omega dash r dash sin del theta we are good to go now yeah let's apply a lot of mathematics will come into the picture acceleration let me write it this way p relative to a parallel to ar this is what we'll try to work out we are going to have final velocity from this stage 2 minus the initial velocity from the stage 1 final velocity parallel to ar final velocity parallel to ar if you watch parallel to ar what is the final velocity v dash cos del theta v dash cos del theta okay is this visible on the camera uh no 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 we need to be careful f parallel to ar p relative a is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity divided by the time interval final velocity is plus downward is negative v dash cos del theta and omega dash r dash sin del theta this is downward that's why negative v dash minus done so this is your final velocity minus that's your final velocity from stage 2 initial velocity parallel to ar what is that f initial velocity that is v v nothing else no all of this divided by the time interval okay that is going to be del t okay so you need to solve this one thing you need to watch Del t is extremely small; it approaches zero. If a delta t approaches zero, then delta theta would op also approach zero. When delta theta approaches zero, that essentially means that cos del theta would approach one, and sine del theta would approach del theta. Right? When angles are extremely small, then cos theta will be one, and sine theta will be theta. That is exactly what we've done. So you just need to plug in the value of v dash. omega dash r dash 
simplify the entire stuff and you will get to some kind of result right okay time to make some space all right here we go v dash what is v dash for you and anyway so let us simplify this cos del theta can be written as let me simply write one so that's one minus omega dash r dash what is that sine del theta we can write as that del theta minus v all of this divided by delta t and v dash is nothing but v plus f del t minus omega dash is omega plus alpha del t and r dash is r plus del r and this is del theta minus v and all of this divided by del t let us do this quickly <coughs> here we go v plus f delta t okay let us open the bracket now here omega r omega r omega r and del theta let me write it this way okay then omega del r omega del r have to be very careful and also a del theta then alpha del t r del theta okay then one more alpha del t del r alpha del t del r and del theta anything else minus v all of this divided by delta t have to be very careful there are few terms which which you really need to neglect now these delta terms are extremely small quantities when when to small quantities multiply the product is even smaller so if you watch this over here neglect this over here delta t del theta neglect delta t del r del theta neglect so all of these terms can be neglected and this is a very safe assumption what we can write now what we can write now is something like this this is going to be v plus f del t and now with a negative sign this is going to be omega r del theta omega r del theta lovely that's gone 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 minus v and all of this divided by delta t so v and v will cancel out f del t by del t minus omega r del theta by del t again lovely del theta by del t is nothing but omega and omega multiplied by omega will be omega square and r so the final result is f minus omega square r now let us write this properly acceleration of p parallel to ar is equal to f minus omega square r a very important result right take a screenshot i'm going to rub it off now the next thing which we'll try to do is to work out the acceleration of p perpendicular to ar acceleration of p perpendicular to ar okay parallel to ar was quite quite a simple result although we did the entire derivation but what it's common sense f above where is it moving ultimately outwards in the upward direction f above and omega square r in the downward direction so f minus omega square r right what what is this omega square r nothing but the radial component of acceleration of q with respect to a you can say that <laughs> anyway and that's exactly what we derived second thing watch f p with respect to a perpendicular to ar again final velocity minus initial velocity but perpendicular to the link in this direction so we've got v sin theta v dash sin del theta omega dash r dash sin cos del theta so it's something like this final velocity inside the bar bracket v dash sin del theta omega dash r dash and that's cos del theta that's the final velocity minus initial velocity in this direction initial velocity from stage 1 that is omega r all of this divided by the time interval in which this change has occurred from omega to omega dash let's say again same stuff if delta t tends to 
delta theta also tends to zero and when that is so cos del theta would be equal to one and sin del theta would be equal to del theta this is exactly what we try to do okay all set final initial and yeah that's the time interval again let us make some space all right v dash let me plug in the values and this is going to become del theta okay v dash is nothing but v plus f times of delta t okay times of sine del theta would become del theta plus omega dash omega plus alpha delta t multiplied by r dash r plus delta r multiplied by cos del theta is nothing but one better to not write it and minus omega r and all of this divided by del theta is this omega r visible on the camera just a check quick check yes it is yeah <coughs> now just do the multiplication v del theta f del t del theta plus omega r plus omega del r plus alpha del t dot r plus alpha del t del r minus omega r all of this divided by del t and here you go cancel neglect two small terms neglect yeah yeah that's all we can do okay okay all right v del theta divided by del t let us split it up right plus omega del r omega del r divided by del t plus alpha del t no 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 that's gone alpha del t r by del t cancel out so if you see this is nothing but the change of angle with respect to time that's angular velocity v omega this is omega del r by del t where is r in this linear direction isn't it r is in this linear direction along the link along the link the velocity change if along the link there is some displacement that means change in velocity so that is going to be your velocity v of the slider and plus alpha r and you can clearly see so <clears throat> let me write this first of all this is what we know alpha r plus 2 times of omega v this over here is your coriolis component of acceleration that we were investigating that's the coriolis component of acceleration right so acceleration of p perpendicular to ar is going to be equal to let me write it here mm, alpha r plus 2 omega v okay just like dx by dt was equal to what v similarly here we had dr by dt so in place of x let's say here we have r that's it now we've got two results and we are ready to find the absolute acceleration of acceleration parallel to ar plus acceleration perpendicular to ar if you watch this acceleration parallel to ar with f minus omega square r and this perpendicular to ar is going to be equal to alpha r plus 2 omega v and which here represents the Coriolis acceleration component if I can fine tune it watch f plus alpha r let's say minus omega square r plus 2 omega v right Ac absolute acceleration of p means p relative to a and that's it that's the absolute acceleration of of p and we can also write it like this f this is the linear acceleration of slider since it is along the pink link then we can write it as p with respect to q let me put a dash over here simply this is just a 
much more technical and correct way of representing the linear acceleration of slide up p with respect to q dash represents that the component of acceleration is linear that's it a better way of writing this small f plus if you watch this is alpha r and this is omega square r if i talk about this point q this point q over here tangential acceleration would be alpha r in this direction radial would be omega square r in this direction so alpha r and omega square r and if i can just make it that is alpha r okay and since it is radially downwards this is omega square r since this is right hand side that's positive since this is in the downward direction that's negative and that is the acceleration of q with respect to a okay this is the acceleration of q with respect to a this is nothing but the absolute acceleration this is nothing but the centripetal acceleration centripetal q relative a this is the tangential q relative a you can say this so essentially i can write it over here f q relative a simply <coughs> plus f coriolis which happens to be 2 times of omega v and that's it that's it this is the representation of p relative to a okay you just need to remember one thing that the magnitude of coriolis component is going to be equal to 2 omega v and what is going to be its direction whether it's going to be this way or this way this way or this way we'll work it out in this article determining the direction of acceleration component don't worry it's going to be damn easy okay one one more thing which i should tell you that that is also quite important some time back 15 to 20 minutes ago i told you acceleration of p relative to q f acceleration of p relative to q can be written as p relative to some fixed point a minus p or not not p but q relative to some fixed point a i wanted this this was my objective p with respect to a that is going to be equal to p with respect to q plus q with respect to a q with respect to a. if you just make a comparison what's left this coriolis component and this linear acceleration is left so basically that's known to us okay you can further subdivide it into two parts one is going to be f centripetal q with respect to a one is going to be f tangential q with respect to a but as far as this pq is concerned f pq this can be split up into two components let me show that to you one component is right here acceleration of the slider which can be written as f you can also write it as f dash p with respect to q much more technical way of writing it and there is one more component that is the coriolis component of acceleration which happens to be 2 omega v so if somebody asks so what is f pq f p with respect to q that is nothing but linear acceleration of the slider plus the coriolis component of acceleration that's it okay direction okay we can work out the direction also just just take a look at this f perpendicular to ar p relative a what did this work out as this worked out as linear acceleration of the slider no 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 not linear acceleration what did tangential acceleration plus a new term this new term happens to be your coriolis component of acceleration isn't it both of them are positive that means both of them are in the same direction one thing which you need to watch is 2 omega v this product omega v is positive so 2 <laughs> omega v what we try to work out, work out is the direction of coriolis component 2 omega v can be positive in two ways can be positive in two ways what are those two ways let us try to work them out number 1 number 1 says omega is positive and v is also positive let's say omega is positive in the clockwise sense because that is exactly what we took we took clockwise sense and we took this radially outward direction as positive that means radially outwards so plus and plus multiplied plus and plus multiplied will give you a positive omega v the second condition would be omega is negative okay so if plus is being considered as clockwise then negative should be considered as anti clockwise and v in order to make this product as positive 
so negative if this is negative over here there has to be another negative so v also has to be negative that means this is going to be radially inwards now that is going to be our sign convention if something is moving in the clockwise sense in the clockwise sense you take it as positive in the anti clockwise sense you take it as negative if something is moving radially outwards take it as positive if something is moving the slider is moving radially inwards take that as negative when that is so when that is so clockwise and radially outward direction positive that means if this is the axis if this is the axis and when we encounter these two cases the coriolis component will be 2 omega v in the right hand side since it is positive and whenever you have some other case this positive this negative or this ne this positive this negative then in that those cases coriolis component of acceleration would be having the left hand side direction since it will be negative don't worry <laughs> we are going to work it out quite easily don't worry till then just note note these these things down okay anyway a better way to understand the direction concept is let's let's take a look i think that would be much better one thing that you need to remember this result 2 omega v will have a positive sign only when omega is positive and v is positive or omega is negative and v is negative what we have assumed is the clockwise direction as positive and anti clockwise direction as uh, what we have assumed is the clockwise direction as positive and anti clockwise direction as negative what we have assumed is radially outward direction as positive and radially inward direction as negative this is what you need to do okay let's let's take a look at four different cases fixation link radially outwards fixation link radially outwards fixation link radially inwards fixation link radially inwards clockwise anti clockwise clockwise anti clockwise okay that's omega that's omega so out and omega is clockwise so obviously we are going to have a coriolis component in this direction okay and since this is anti clockwise and the, it is radially inwards so anti clockwise negative and this is inward that is also negative so coriolis towards the right hand side this direction to omega v but again is there a simple way to determine the direction of Coriolis component, yes, there is a simple way, and let me tell you that. Remember this concept. Remember this. Rotate the velocity vector. Remember this. Rotate the velocity vector. Better to note it down. The velocity vector by 90 degree in the direction of angular velocity this is exactly what needs to be done if you watch this let's say this is point p let us make the point p where is the slider going this is the velocity vector this is v okay watch it here again that's your point p here again let us have the point b where is the velocity vector above here again this is point p this is point p this is point p where is the velocity vector in the downward direction that's velocity vector here also it is moving in the downward sense we wish to accomplish we wish to determine the the coriolis component of acceleration now one thing is for sure it is, is going to be perpendicular whether towards the right hand side or left hand side that has to be determined rotate the v vector by 90 degree in the direction of angular velocity where is the angular velocity in this direction clockwise that's 2 omega v again velocity vector upward direction where is the angular velocity going anti-clockwise so this is p this is 2 omega v isn't it simple this is the velocity vector isn't it where is it moving clockwise clockwise this way that's 2 omega v again where is it moving anti-clockwise 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 this way 
to omega v if you watch in these cases omega positive v positive clockwise positive radially outward positive and that's why you have got a positive value or you've got a Coriolis comparative acceleration in the positive direction here omega is negative anti-clockwise but velocity is positive omega is negative velocity is positive so negative positive would become negative so negative that means acceleration this is negative x direction right i hope you've got the point here also you can you can take a look at this is positive omega is positive and velocity radially inwards so that is going to be negative so omega plus v minus omega plus v v minus plus minus is minus so minus is negative x direction that's it and you can work it out quite easily the next case so that was all about Coriolis component of acceleration and how exactly you can work out its direction so we have successfully completed all of these topics we've done the investigation we found out that when we analyze the acceleration perpendicular to the link we get alpha r which we earlier used to yes we do but apart from that we also get one more component that is 2 omega v which 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 mr coriolis found and that's why it is his component okay and that's why the coriolis component of acceleration and now we know very well how to work out the direction also right so that's also quite important try to locate the velocity vector there could only be two things then either it would move clock or anti clock rotate by 90 degree and you are going to have the acceleration coriolis component of accelerations direction right we are ready to solve some problems and let's see them one by one here we go yeah all the topics have been covered and we can now move ahead let me just wrap this Let me ask you some questions. Let's say we've got a link and a slider, which happens to have a linear acceleration f and at any moment in time, it is having a velocity v, okay? This is the fixed link. Link one, link two is a r. Remember that's a, that's r and this is slider, slider. This is your link three, let's say. Okay. F P with respect to A, what is this? I've told you in the vector form also F P with respect to A is nothing but F P with respect to Q, F Q with respect to A. Remember initially we started off by this P with respect to Q, P with respect to A minus Q with respect to A. From that, this is the fine tuning. What is P with respect to Q? It is having two components of acceleration. One is this slider's acceleration, while the other is the Coriolis component of acceleration. So let better to write this as F Coriolis. Secondly, Q with respect to A, it is going to have two components, Q respect to A plus tangential Q with respect to A. You know how to calculate this centripetal omega square R. You know how to calculate this. This is alpha R linear acceleration. Well, if you come across a problem in which the slider is accelerating, this will be given to you. What is the rate of acceleration? If you come across the problem where the slider Slider's motion uh, where the slider is moving radially outwards with a constant velocity, then this won't be given. Okay. If it is constant velocity, if it is constant velocity, then this linear acceleration would be zero. Let's say V is a constant. So dV over dt obviously is going to be equal to zero. If it is constant, there is going to be no change in velocity. If there is no change in velocity, obviously it is going to be the acceleration is going to be zero. Right. And this Coriolis component of acceleration going to be 2 omega v again again if the link rotates and this link this slider <coughs> is logged no coriolis if the link stays here only sliding no yes rotation here there is no rotation If you see here, 
there was some rotation and here there is no rotation only sliding this is only sliding again no Coriolis here also no Coriolis here also no Coriolis so if you want to see a Coriolis component of acceleration or if you want to work out a circumstance in which Coriolis component of acceleration comes into the picture the link has got to be rotating okay and on that link there has to be a slider which either would be moving in the upward direction or in the downward direction so there has to be some some rotation of a link going on and on that link you will have a slider which either would be moving translating let's say upward or in the downward direction when these two things are happening rotation and also sliding what rotation rotation of link a r and sliding of slider let's say when these two things are checked when Coriolis component of acceleration will come into the picture right now take a look at this question where is it gone yeah take a look at this problem so you've got a link AR rotating about a point A okay <clears throat> just a second a link air is rotating about a point A and at a particular instant okay so that's the link AR right at a particular instant when angle is 90 degree so this angle over here that it makes with the horizontal is 90 degree it's vertical absolutely angular velocity has been given as 2 radians per second counterclockwise and that's why this direction and angular acceleration is 5 radians per second as shown in the figure 5 radians per second square this is second square not S2 all right a slider p sliding along the rod radially outwards this radially outwards is the direction signifies the direction of the slider that's the slider here upwards or outwards let's say at this moment in time the slider and is happens to be at a distance of two meters from this point a the slider is right here that's point p on slider q on air right <coughs> corresponding point on the rod is q okay fine this is what we, we learned in the in the derivation also p on slider q on air velocity and acceleration of p with respect to q are 3 meters per second and 4 meter per second square both radially outwards now the velocity at this moment in time happens to be 3 meters per second v is 3 meter per second and this this is f okay f of the slider better to write it down slider with respect to the slider we have got its velocity as 3 meters per second isn't it what else and the acceleration happens to be 4 meter per second square 4 meters per second square okay r is equal to 2 meters that's given what else angular acceleration is given angular velocity is given everything has been given to us omega is 2 radians per second omega is 2 radians per second angular acceleration okay this happens to be 5 radians per second square and that is clearly visible in the diagram also 5 radians per second square all right now what we need to work out is q relative a q relative a now all of these things can be done quite easily just watch <coughs> q vector this is in vectors centripetal tangential okay where is the movement movement is in the anti-clockwise sense so if you watch this centripetal always towards the center towards the center of rotation that is towards a okay and this is going to be since where is the movement anti-clockwise isn't it anti-clockwise so the, the direction would be something like this okay so you club them together you are going to find the resultant that's quite easy all right watch you want to work out fq relative a fcqa ftqa okay what are their magnitudes let me first of all tell you q with respect to a center button is nothing but omega square r plus plus this is tangential but the direction is different you cannot add them like you do in simple algebra you cannot add them like that 
you need to apply the concept of vector algebra and this is going to be alpha r omega square r what is omega that is 2 2 square is 2 square is 4 into r r is 2 4 into 2 is 8 plus i will doing it correctly 2 2 is 4 4 into 2 is 8 alpha r alpha is 5 r is 2 5 into 2 is 10 so you cannot add them simply because this has a downward direction this has a left hand side direction so you need to apply vector algebra right so if you watch both of them are perpendicular let me make the diagram over here right that's uh, f c i've made that first where will i make the diagram that's 10 and what is this this is nothing but ft q relative a and this is in the downward direction so it's going to be visible yeah f t q relative a what is the value this is 8 and that's 10 this way this way law of triangle two vectors taken in magnitude and direction or if two vectors taken in magnitude and direction are represented by the two sides of the triangle then the third side will result the will will represent the resultant taken in the opposite order listen to this <laughs> Uh, this is the triangle law which we study in vectors if two sides of a triangle represents the acceleration let's say in this case represents the acceleration in magnitude and direction okay and then the third side taken in the opposite order would represent the resultants so you can clearly see this can be worked out you draw a 10 centimeter long line and an 8 centimeter long line and then measure this length with the help of a scale you will be able to get the value okay and there is an analytical approach to get this this is under root of 8 square plus 10 square will get you this value let me tell you under root of 8 square plus 10 square so this is going to be 8 8 is 64 64 plus 100 is 164 so let me check under root of 164 this is going to work out as 12.8 12.8 meters per second square okay done p relative q this p relative q second f p relative q again this can be worked out quite easily p with respect to q this is p with respect to q okay if you watch this is nothing but the linear acceleration this is nothing but the linear acceleration of slider which has been given to us and this over here is the coriolis component of acceleration linear acceleration of slider how much is the value let me just make a quick check the value is linear acceleration linear acceleration where is it gone four meter per second square 4 meter per second square okay and this Coriolis component of acceleration Coriolis component of acceleration this is 2 omega v 2 omega v 2 times of omega what is omega again where is the value 2 omega is nothing but 2 into v velocity at that moment in time 3 meter per second 3 meter per second to so 3 and that's it this is what you need to calculate now if you, if you watch carefully this is the linear acceleration of slider what is the movement direction is upwards isn't it acceleration of slider is move slider is moving in this direction this direction and here we have the coriolis component of acceleration okay the coriolis component of acceleration is somewhat in the this direction <coughs> and if you watch carefully since this is sort of moving in an anti-clockwise sense the coriolis component again if this is the velocity vector right radially outwards you rotate it by 90 degree in the direction of angular velocity where is the what is the direction of angular velocity that is anti-clockwise so you rotate it like this this is going to be 2 omega v so it's, it's, it's having a direction like this again since there are two different directions you cannot just add them simply right you need to apply the concept of vector algebra so this is going to be 4 in the upward direction and this is going to be 3 to 6 is 12 
in the left hand side direction if i were to make uh, like this that's 12 that's no 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 i have to go in the upper direction 12 4 the resultant right triangle law of vector addition two sides of the triangle represents the acceleration vectors in magnitude and direction then the third side would represent the resultant taken in the opposite order and that's the resultant this is f absolute p relative q if you just want to work it out 4 square plus 12 square 12 square is 144 4 square is 16 144 plus 16 is 5160 under root of 160 i don't know just a check quick check Twelve point six four nine. Twelve point six four nine. That means twelve point six five. Let's write it as twelve point six five. That's uh, in meters per second square. So second thing also has been worked out. Twelve point six five. Third case. What is the objective? P relative a. Okay. P relative a. This is what needs to be worked out. P with respect to A, as I have already told you, as I have already told you, if you have got a link that was your originally point Q, that's your point P. Okay, so P with respect to Q, that is the acceleration is equal to P with respect to here you have the fixed point A, A minus P Q with respect to A. So FP with respect to A is equal to FP with respect to Q plus FQ with respect to A. This is what you need to do. P with respect to A is the sum of these two fellows. P with respect to Q and Q with respect to A. P with respect to Q and Q with respect to A. You already have these two things. Right. So the best way to approach this. The final case. Right. Initially we saw both the vectors were perpendicular. So we applied the Pythagoras theorem and worked out the, their values. Here also Pythagoras theorem was applied. Here also Pythagoras theorem was applied. Now in this particular case you see these two vectors. We don't know what is the angle between them. If we don't know what is the angle between them then... Uh, how will we able to apply the concept of vectors and be able to get this value so the best way to approach it is uh, where can i draw it okay that, that's that's the vector sum from vector sum i need to make the graphical diagram let me show you just watch better to rub all of this You've got two answers. The first value which we got was 12.8 and the second value was 12.65. Let me just write it. This was equal to 12.8 and this was equal to 12.65. Anyway, you just remember them and we are going to apply the diagram approach or the acceleration diagram is what we will be making. Just take a look. Fixed point. These are the values. Okay. They have already been calculated. Alright. <coughs> Scale let's say 10 mm is 1 meter per second square. Watch. Fixed. Fixed. Radial. In this direction. Towards the center. How much is this radial or centripetal? 8. So 8 meters per second square is going to be 80 millimeter long line. Here we go. That's an 80 millimeter long line which represents 8 meter per second square. And then angular velocity. So in this direction, there is going to be tangential acceleration. Alpha r represent the tangential acceleration. Okay. So Ft q with respect to it, that is 10. So 1 meter per second square is 100 mm. Therefore, 10 meter per second square will be equal to 100. No, no, no. 1 meter per second square is 10 millimeters. So 10 meters per second square will be 100 millimeters. What is the direction? Tangential to the link either right, either left or right. Just try to work out. The link is rotating in the anti-clockwise sense and that's why it is going to be in this direction. That is towards the left. From here, let's just write Q with respect to A and let us move in this direction. And yeah, done. Done. That's 10. So this is 8 and that's 10. Okay, that's 8 meter per second square, that is 10 meters per second square. This is 80 millimeters and this is 10 millimeters, 80 millimeters 
and this is 100 millimeters okay so and the absolute acceleration can be worked it out worked out quite easily this is the absolute acceleration right <laughs> if you're going to do this on a piece of paper you are going to get the value of uh, what say f q relative a isn't it q relative a this is the first thing 12.8 this is your first answer second answer was f p relative q this is going to be equal to 12.65 meter per second square just keep your scale over here keep your scale over here and try to measure this length if you have taken the same scale then you should get this value as 128 millimeters to be very precise and when you convert that using this scale it is going to be equal to 12.8 meters per second square right that's quite easy secondly <clears throat> we've got we've reached point q now once you've got got uh, point q you can locate point p also so p with respect to q okay along the slider there is this acceleration acceleration of slider that's the acceleration of slider sometimes i represent it by simple f but the best way to represent it is by f dash pq right that is f dash pq how much four so four meter per second square that means 40 millimeters where radially outwards in the upward direction here we go done now coriolis component of acceleration we know very well the velocity vector is like this what is the rotation anti-clockwise so rotated by an anti-degree that's 2 omega v that's coriolis component so damn easy okay so you've got to move in this direction lhs side this way this way right that's the coriolis component that is 12 meter per second square that means this line is of 120 millimeters and that's the absolute acceleration this also we have achieved if you keep a scale over here this measurement is going to be equal to 126.5 millimeters which on conversion will be equal to 12.65 meters per second square that's it and you've got a1 you've got q1 and you've got p1 now if you want p with respect to a just join p1 with a1 that's the absolute acceleration of p just try to measure this length and this is going to be precisely equal to let me check <clears throat> okay here we go let me show you this is going to work out as this length is 223.6 that is 22.3 meters per second square okay so that's your final answer and if you want to check the first answer q with respect to a this was 128.0625 okay let me show you the dimension also uh, 128.06 then this was the absolute acceleration p with respect to q this was 126 12 12.65 first answer was 12.8 that's why 128 mm and when you do the conversion that's 12.8 this is 12.6 okay and this is also this is 12 126 mm that means when you do the conversion it is 12.6 meters per second square and finally this is the result and let me just show you the value is 223.61 that means when you do the conversion f p relative a 223 223 millimeters that means 22.3 meters per second square 22.3 meters per second square this is your answer that's it now take a look at this one just try to work out the answer you don't have to lift your pen also i'm sure you can do this quite easily tell me what is supposed to be calculated Coriolis component it's magnitude not even the direction it's quite easy 2 omega v what do you need to do you need to find 2 omega v okay you need to find 2 omega v let me go over to the right hand side 2 omega v omega is nothing but 2 pi n n is what what is n rpm 120 rpm by 60 multiplied by what is the velocity velocity is 12 meter per second just plug in the value in a calculator and you shall get the answer this is 12 done to 
pi n is 120 over 60 tan multiplied by 2 multiplied by 12 and the answer is 96 pi which happens to be 301.59 so the closest answer is this 302 my answer is working out as 301.59 which is very close to 302 what 2 omega v that is uh, meters per second square and that's quite easy the answer is this 302 done okay guys now take a look at this problem example 3 very interesting and interesting in the sense that there is no acceleration of the slider there is no acceleration of the link also right so how to approach this this is going to be quite simple i mean this is concept implementation we have got a fixed link right somewhat in this direction okay what is the name this has been named as o one end point other end point is b and you have a slider right here okay lovely all right if you watch let's focus on this point is there some yeah this point has been named as point a midpoint of the slider let's say we need want the absolute acceleration of a with respect to o. let us clear our objective first what we want is absolute acceleration absolute acceleration of a with respect to o. this is what we need to work out and if you watch carefully velocity of slider okay slider let me put it this way velocity of slider has been given and the angular velocity also has been given to us how much are those values uh, uniform velocity of 0.75 uniform this is constant and as far as this omega is concerned again here also one word is written constant here uniform was written that means there is no change here a constant is written that means again there is going to be no change so that's equal to what two radians per second two radians per second how do you approach it how do you approach it if you watch you want the absolute acceleration basically absolute acceleration is equal to okay parallel and perpendicular this is what we followed in case of parallel we got this f minus omega square r in case of perpendicular we got this alpha r plus 2 omega v isn't it but there is no alpha there is no acceleration so these two are already out of the picture there is only omega square r so omega square r if i if i try to make this this is omega square r and this over here what is the direction of movement anti-clockwise this way the Coriolis component where is it moving radially outwards or inwards sliding radially outwards so this is sliding here so the velocity vector is in this direction rotate this velocity vector in the direction of this rotation so this way that is the Coriolis component so this is the Coriolis component that is 2 omega v okay so these are the two vectors that you need to simplify that's it that's it omega square r omega square to 2 is 4 4 times of 4 times of r what is r r is equal to to have do we have the value of r 1 meter r is 1 meter so this this is going to work out as omega square 2 square is 4 4 into 1 is 4 so that's 4 2 omega v 2 into omega 2 into omega 2 into 2 is 4 4 into 0.75 that is 3 so this is going to be 3 so you have two vectors one is 4 one over here that is 3 so the resultant is going to be 4 square plus 3 square and under root okay so if i can just make a velocity triangle let me shift this here and this would be this is 3 under root of 4 square plus 3 square 4 square 16 5 the answer is 5 okay so damn simple option c is correct there we go try to work this out now terminology has been slightly changed we earlier used to assume this point p on slider but now it is different point p is on link 
point P is on the link and whereas Q is on this slider because this is the fixed link this is the rotating link and this one link 3 is the sliding link and in the sliding link we've got point Q and P happens to be on this black color that is link link 2 right so what we've been asked is to find the magnitude and direction of Coriolis component now one thing is for sure when you talk about the Coriolis component obviously the magnitude is going to be 2 omega v whether the direction is this fashion or this fashion we don't know we can work it out based on the velocity vector where is the velocity vector if you watch carefully so this diagram has already been provided it is in the upper direction this is the velocity vector this is v v q relative p now you just need to see whether it is moving clock or anti-clock watch it is moving in the clockwise direction so you need to rotate this velocity vector in this fashion that is the Coriolis component of acceleration okay so this is positive right hand side direction so obviously these two options makes no sense this is omega v omega v so either option a or option c is correct option a direction of vq with respect to rotated by 90 degree in direction of omega v. yes that is the correct option <laughs> why would you go for opposite you know very well that coriolis component of acceleration happens to be in the direction of angular velocity in the direction of omega 2 obviously the magnitude is 2 omega v and that's it that's your correct option so guys that was all from my side for today and i'm going to see you again with some more videos on acceleration until then take care have a nice day keep learning keep watching and thank you